Hello, it's Carol Connor from Pilgrim School. I'm back on campus after one year away, and this is my new space. The library is being used as a classroom right now. So I'm in a classroom that is being used half for me with a little bit of space and half as a storage closet. So it's a bit bare wall behind me and there's a nice window, but this is where it is. I'm inspired to read again today because I just got this book from local authors, near Larchmont Boulevard, who, from Chevalier's books. It is called Hugo and the Impossible Thing, and I'm reading it because of my dear friend, Pat Powell. Hugo and the Impossible Thing. It's written by Renee Felice Smith and Chris Gabriel, illustrated by Sydney Hansen. And they have signed it. It is an imprint of Penguin Books, Flamingo Books, imprint of Penguin, Random House published in 2021. Hugo and the impossible thing. For you, Pat. At the edge of the forest stood the impossible thing. It was a jumbled mess of giant boulders, thorny mazes, raging rivers and towering cliffs. The animals in the forest often wondered what was beyond the impossible thing, but no one knew because getting through it would be impossible. And because everyone said it was impossible, no animal ever tried. Until one day, a curious little dog named Hugo sat near the edge of the impossible thing and thought to himself, how do we know the impossible thing is impossible if no one's ever tried to get through it? On his way home, Hugo visited his friend, Mr. Bear, who was lumbering around in his cave. Hey, Mr. Bear, said Hugo, do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? Of course not, Mr. Bear replied. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be someone big and strong like me. Have you ever tried? asked Hugo. Well, no, admitted Mr. Bear, because the impossible thing is impossible. I see, said Hugo. Well, tomorrow, I think I'm going to try. Hugo visited Little Fox, who was pondering in her den. Hey, Little Fox, said Hugo. Do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? No way, scoffed Little Fox. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be someone quick and clever like me. Have you ever tried? asked Hugo. Not a chance, said Little Fox, because I'm clever enough to know impossible things are impossible. I see, said Hugo. Well, tomorrow, I think I'm going to try. Hugo visited Miss Otter, who was bathing in her pond. Hey, Miss Otter, said Hugo. Do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? I'm sorry, no, Miss. but no, Miss Otter replied. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be a skilled swimmer like me. Have you ever tried? asked Hugo. Of course not, said Miss Otter. It's just as they say, impossible. I see, said Hugo. Well, tomorrow, I'm going to try. Hugo visited old Mr. Goat, who was balancing on a branch way up in his tree. Hello up there, old Mr. Goat, Do you, said Hugo. Do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? <laughs> Definitely not, old Mr. Goat grunted. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be an expert climber like me. Have you ever tried? asked Hugo. Why would I? replied old Mr. Goat. I've lived in this forest longer than anyone and the impossible thing has always been impossible. That's what I've heard, said Hugo. Well, tomorrow, I think I'm going to try. As curious little Hugo began to fall asleep that night, he thought to himself, everyone keeps telling me the impossible thing is impossible. But no one has ever tried to make it through the impossible thing. Even though I'm not as big and strong as Mr. Bear or as quick and clever as Miss Fox. 
as little fox. And I can't swim like Miss Otter or climb like old Mr. Goat. I still feel like I have to try. And so Hugo drifted off to sleep and dreamt of the impossible thing and what might lie beyond it and of being the first in the forest to get through it. The next morning, Hugo stopped by old Mr. Goat's tree, but he wasn't there. He passed Miss Otter's pond, but she wasn't there. Little Fox wasn't in her den and Mr. Bear wasn't in his cave. When Hugo finally arrived at the edge of the forest, he was surprised to find Mr. Bear, Little Fox, Miss Otter and old Mr. Goat waiting for him. In all the years I've lived in the forest, explained Mr. Bear, everyone has always said getting through the impossible thing was impossible. Yes, agreed Little Fox, so no one ever thought to try. Until you, Hugo, Miss Otter grinned. So if you really want to try, grumbled old Mr. Goat, we will help you, Mr. Bear assured him. Hugo looked to his friends and smiled. Let's try to make it through the impossible thing together. And wouldn't you know it, with the help of big and strong Mr. Bear, Hugo and his friends moved the giant boulders. With the help of quick and clever little fox, Hugo and his friends found their way through the tricky thorny maze. With the help of sweet Miss Otter, Hugo and his friends swam all the way across the raging rivers. And with the help of grumpy old Mr. Goat, Hugo and his friends climbed all the way up the towering cliffs. When old Mr. Goat nudged Hugo up to the very top of the tallest towering cliff, Hugo became the first in the forest ever to make it through the impossible thing. And there, just beyond the peak of the impossible thing, was the most perfect place in all the forest. The sun was warmer, and the shade was cooler, the berries were sweeter, and the grass was greener. Hugo, Mr. Bear, Little Fox, Miss Otter, and Old Mr. Goat spent the rest of the day there, and many days after. And from that day on, thanks to curious little Hugo and his most supportive friends, the impossible thing became known as the extremely difficult but absolutely positively possible thing. The end. And I'll leave you to have some thoughts about Imp what impossible means to some people and if everybody said it was impossible would people just stop trying or are there people who say well I'm going to have a go at it anyway like little Hugo so I just thought that was a really nice um, teamwork book to share with friends and inspired me to read it because my friend Miss Pat Powell has Chloe not Hugo but Chloe and I think she will enjoy this story we used to read together many years ago, and this one's for you, Pat. Bye, friends at Pilgrim, who I hope enjoy the story too.